our discussion today will focus on the introduction to quality service management in tourism and hospitality. In the tourism and hospitality industry, establishment of quality is one of the prime reasons that an entity will be patronized. It should always be remembered that customers, guests as we call them, have a lot of choices. With over decades of existence and operations, the determination of quality has changed through the years and it up, it up to the impatience and sophistication of guests. This concept should always be inculcated in all service providers in this industry. So these are our learning objectives for this topic. At the end of this chapter, the students should be able to define what is quality, determine the quality dimensions of quality, identify the distinction between goods and services, service and products, and gain insights on the contributions made by the pioneers of total quality management and service management. So let's proceed to the definition of quality first. According to Natson in 1990, it reflected in his research that the intense competition in the hospitality industry has led many businesses to look for ways on how they can profitably uh, differentiate themselves from their competition and capture the highest quality. So that is also similarly to the definition of where mayor in 2000, wherein he noted that in the tourism sector, even though the production and distribution of services involve different experiences on both parts of the tourists and the suppliers, the ultimate goal is still to achieve the highest quality possible. So how to determine the highest quality? Uh, it is actually one that, that must first to understand, you know, we, we have to understand the concept of quality so that uh, for our guests in the tourism and hospitality industry, they will use it in terms of um, specification, standards, and other measures to evaluate quality. So this is now a piece of evidence that quality can be understood, it can also be defined, and it can be measured. So especially for our guests, no? sometimes if uh, asked on quality, they could not define it, but it would immediately, uh, or they would immediately know um, that um, what is quality when, when they see one, okay? So it will now be very critical for quality to be seen. But of course, um, to illustrate as what the quote uh, says, you know, there's a quote says that, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, so is quality, and more importantly, our guests define it. And um, according to Joseph Geron, one of the pioneers, he is actually one of the pioneers in quality. He researched, no, okay, or he defined quality as fitness for use. This means that the concept of quality is variable to one defining it. We cannot say that the service of uh, a casual dining restaurant has high quality if we have no intention of dining in the said restaurant. So it is also because that we are not intended for the said restaurant. So we have no means in determining quality. Um, another example, a, a dining staff member that has no experience in the kitchen cannot also decipher the difference whether a kitchen knife of a good quality or not. It is because um, it is not fit. Okay? It is not fit for him or her to use it. And another definition of quality is from the ISO or from the International Organization for Standardization. It is actually the world body for standard formulation. Uh, they define it as quality as the totality of features and characteristics of a good or service that bear on its ability to satisfy a given or implied need. Okay, so this means that in this definition, it is actually clear that a given or implied need should be addressed 
and this is usually defined by the user. In our case, our guest or restaurant staff from which he or she would address the criteria for quality. Okay. So in the next slide, I will give you uh, the definition of what is a service and a product and goods and services. So many have been mentioned already you know, in terms of the concepts of products and services, but let us add another term, okay? goods, for example. Okay. So this three terms are often confused with, with each other. Okay. So for the purposes of this lecture or this topic, I will be giving you or we will be taking the marketing perspective of the terms. So let's try to identify first what is a product. A product is actually defined as anything that we can offer to a market for attention or acquisition, use or consumption that could satisfy a need or want. However, the, this definition of product does not only involve tangible goods such as those that are purchased in a restaurant like burgers, fries, or drinks. So this definition of product must be extended also to that uh, it also extends to uh, include intangible objects as well because they can also be offered to a market, okay? So just like for burgers, fries, and drinks, these are what embody, okay? For example, the next, um, the next term, which is goods, no? So um, for goods, uh, according to Hill, 1999, he refer uh, to this. He refers this to the physical objects to which uh, a demand uh, exists. So their physical attributes are preserved over time, and their ownership can be established, and uh, it can exist independently of the owner and can be traded on markets. While services, meanwhile, they have more features. So. That's um, according to Lovelock, 1983, he connoted this as the IHIP or what they called, um, um, these are some characteristics uh, that um, connotes to the intangibility or intangible, heterogeneous, uh, heterogeneous, inseparable and perishable. So these are the different characteristics that connoted um, by, by Lovelock, okay, according to his research. So let's try to find out if what are these characteristics. So uh, in nature, we can say that services are intangible. It means that they cannot be touched as they are not physical and can only exist in connection to other things. Just, just like, for example, the warm smile and grateful service of a food attendant in a restaurant uh, cannot, it, these, these are the are the things or the services that cannot be touched, but it can be felt and it can only exist because you have ordered, okay, for example, a food item in the restaurant. Similarly, services also are heterogeneous. So due to their dependence on the workforce, which does not, does the act, okay? So in the hospitality, this concept is sometimes referred to as inconsistency. Okay, the service that a hair, for example, uh, the service that a hair therapist renders to his or her client at 10 a.m. would be of different quality and dimension as to when he or she does the service at 8 p.m. This is why the industry has the concept of service recovery in place. It should be in place. Just like when a famous pizza house or a famous pizza house delivers its pizza on time, if it fails to do so, the pizza would be free. So this concept of heterogeneity is also brought about by the differing likes and dislikes of the guests. So even though a standard is set, the satisfaction of each guest varies greatly. And of course, as previously stated, the guest defines the concept of high quality. That is why commonly the service staff adheres to the request of the guests. Inseparability, Meanwhile, means that the production of act of the act of delivery of service staff and the consumption, or what we call guest experience, cannot be separated from each other. So, just like um, in a spa, okay, an example. So, the service rendered by a spa therapist cannot be done while the guest is still at the office. So, the guest should be present for the massage service to be done. 
using technical criteria to define services. According to Smith in, in 1776, he states that um, a service will perish. No? So we are now in perishability uh, in the very instant of its performance and seldom leave any trace or value behind them for which an equal quantity of services could afterwards be procured. So this is especially true for hotels where the main product is the sale of its guest rooms. So for example, if the sales team of a particular hotel does not perform its job properly, usually the chance where a room can sold or can be sold is lost forever. So the sale cannot be brought back again for the specific day and time. So because of these characteristics, implications exist, which will be tackled in the next slide. Okay. So as you can see, the overnight stay of a guest exhibits an intangible, heterogeneous, inseparable, and perishable experience. So in our next slide, as you can see, this is the characteristics of service compared to goods. So um, as we all know that um, we, we are distinguishing already the differences between goods and services. So it is now time for us to develop the service product concept. So for, for the um, product concept, according to Ford in 2011, he actually mentioned that um, the goods and services could not be separated from each other. In the delivery of services, one cannot be performed pro properly without the use of tangible items. For example, okay, let's say a spa. Okay? Uh, spa therapist to be able to conduct a full body massage, he or she needs a cozy bed that would ensure comfort to his or her guests. Uh, another one is um, a spa therapist uh, needed to have an essential oil okay? that, that should uh, be applied to the body for the massage. Or maybe the, um, the guest therapist needed glasses when conducting Ventosa services. Okay, so those are some of the example. And another example is a tour guide. Okay? Um, a tour guide. For example, they need maps. Okay, they also need um, they also need some flags or other collaterals for him or for her to deliver his or her commentary. So thus, it is essential that these components be purchased as a package. With this, uh, the concept of service product was conceptualized. Okay, so with this illustration, you can see that. Um, if you're going to compare the, the goods and services. Okay, so um, these are some of the comparison so, uh, and the resulting implications as well. So for goods, we know that it is tangible while service is intangible. So that results to, uh, serve, uh, to the following. Of course, services cannot be inventory. Services cannot be easily uh, patented services cannot be readily displayed or communicated pricing is also difficult okay and goods are standardized but services are heterogeneous so um, in result uh, service delivery and customer satisfaction depend on employee and customer actions and service quality also depends on uh, many uncontrollable factors so there is no sure knowledge that the service delivered matches what was planned and promoted okay and then for goods production separate from consumption but in services it is simultaneous production and consumption so customers participate in and affect the transaction customers affect each other and employees affect the service outcome and the centralization may be essential and mass production is also difficult and uh, another uh, goods are non-perishable, but services are perishable. So it is difficult to synchronize um, supply and demand with services because services cannot be returned or cannot be resold. Okay. And uh, of course, uh, for our next slide, uh, I will share with you the dimensions of quality for services products. Okay. According to Garvin in 1987, in an article in Harvard Business Review, he mentioned that because of the competition for the quality goods and services, and with the internationalization of said concepts, these are the different dimensions to be observed for quality. 
and it should be considered. The first one is performance. Performance actually refers to a service product's uh, primary operating characteristics. Usually uh, in the hospitality and um, in tourism industry, as we are catering to intangible dominant concepts, performance often means prompt service. Okay? And the, this dimensions of quality has very measurable uh, measurable attributes. That is why brands cannot usually be ranked objectively on their respective aspects. Although uh, measurable, it is quite hard to measure overall performance rankings as they involve benefits that not very that the, that not every consumer needs. The second one is features. So for features, these are actually dimensions of quality which are usually cited as a secondary aspect of performance. So they are uh, secondary in such a way that they supplement the basic functioning of a service product. Uh, example would include free drinks in a plane, uh, free Wi-Fi service in guest rooms, and a complimentary hot tea after a full body massage. So sometimes identifying features from the primary performance characteristics is difficult as they accentuate the actual performance indicators. But what is important to know is that features involve objective and measurable attributes that can be clearly observed, which sometimes can affect their translation and quality differences. The third one is reliability. So reliability refers to the ability to perform the promised service product dependably and accurately. So this means that being able to provide service as promised is one of the main considerations in assessing this dimension. The guest assess quality by gauging that when he or she promises to uh, or for his or her pizza to be delivered in 30 minutes, it should be delivered in less than or exactly 30 minutes. Okay, so when a guest is promised for a mouth water watering dining experience, then the ambient service and food should all be complementary to deliver the said experience. So which means reliability can also mean dependability in hand handling guests' service problems in that every challenge or difficulty that may arise be treated right the first time. And then the fourth one is conformance. So this quality dimension means that a service product's design and characteristics should meet the standard set. According to Duran, uh, became, uh, Duran became one of the pioneers who specialized in this area. Service products to be accomplished and performed properly, it is needed to have specifications. So when new product uh, offerings or service provisions are developed, Dimensions are actually set to become standards for evaluation. These specifications are treated as the targets to be met in a specific service product. And of course, we have here the fifth one, which is the durability. So the, this dimension is more detectable in goods rather than in services, and it has both technical and economic dimensions. Technically, durability can refer to the amount of use before a specific product deteriorates. So one example, or for example, a commercial oven can be measured by the number of years. It may service a specific kitchen inside a restaurant or an um, espresso machine. So in the case of coffee shops. In the case of service aspects, in both, um, in both uh, personal and company reputation, Cost in training and hiring of qualified and complementary staff may be considered within this dimension. And of course, we have here number six, which is serviceability. The sixth uh, dimension of quality again, again uh, more um, inclined okay, toward goods rather than services. So um, is serviceability or the speed you known just like courtesy, competence, and ease of repair? Guests are concerned with the breakdown of the products that are actually offered to them. But of course, most importantly, they are concerned with how fast the standard they paid for can be restored. 
Okay, connecting to service concept, this dimension can also cover how fast a hotel can transfer a guest to another hotel after he or she was declined because um, the initial hotel was fully booked or how the restaurant management can deal with accidents and give service recovery as the soon as possible time. And of course, we have here aesthetics that it is, is actually the seventh dimension. So this dimension along with the last dimension are highly subjective. Aesthetics, um, it's just like how a service product is perceived. No, it is, clear, it is clearly uh, a matter of personal judgment. Okay? It reflects how a guest or it is as an individual, even you know, with this fact, there appears uh, to be some patterns in guest likes and dislikes when it comes to basis of tastes. Their tastes, of course, are affected by a variety of factors that includes their demographic and psychographic characteristics. Because of this, uh, hotels, resorts, and other hospitality and tourism establishments need to conduct uh, market segmentation to develop their target segments as what uh, the quote, quote says, you can have it all. In the case of some famous hotel chains, they have segmented their properties or brands to cater to differing needs of the guests. And of course, we have here number eight or the eighth dimension, which is perceived quality. Guests usually do not have a complete guide on the service products dimensions. Um, unknowingly, they are indirectly measuring this measurement, which is the only basis for them to compare brands. Just like, for example, a tour experience cannot be observed directly. It is usually must be gauged by a number of tangible and intangible aspects of tour package. Um, because of this, uh, images, advertising, uh, brand names can be critical. Some brands even ship from outside a country uh, to maintain service quality and to deliver value as they promise it to their guests. Corporate reputation is its most prized position and is the focus of perceived quality. And our next slide, these are the different notable people in service quality. With emerging demand for studies in total quality management and services, Marketing leading to the study of service quality. These are the following people who were involved in the evolution. So we have here Walter A. Schuhart. Uh, he was uh, an American uh, physicist. He is also an engineer and statistician. He is also known as the father of statistical quality control and also related to the Schuhart cycle. Then we have here William Edwards Deming. He is, or he was an American engineer a statistician, professor, author, lecturer, and management consultant. He also championed the work of uh, Walter Schwartz, includes statistical process control, operational definitions, and what Deming called the short cycle, which had evolved into plan to do X or PDSA. And the third one, we have Joseph M. Duran. He made many contributions to the field of quality management in his more than 70 active working years. His book, Quality Control Handbook, is a classic reference for quality engineers. He also revolutionized the Japanese philosophy on quality management and in no small way worked to help shape Japan's economy into the industrial leader it is today. Dr. Chiran was the first to incorporate the human aspect of quality management, which is referred to as Total Quality Management, or TQM. And we have here Philip B. Crosby. He was a businessman and author who contributed to management theory and quality management practices. He initiated the Zero Defects program at the Martin Company. As the quality control manager of Pershing Miss Missile Program, Crosby was credited with a 25% reduction in the overall rejection rate and a 30% reduction in scrap costs. And Armand V. Uh, Figenboom. He was an American quality control expert and a businessman as well. He devised the concept of total quality control or TQC, which inspired uh, total quality management or TQM. And we also have Karo Ishikawa. 
He is a notable. He is notable for rejuvenating the norm in the workplace. He always believed that quality should not stop in reinventing a product alone. He was one of the few people who believed that delivering quality does not stop in purchasing the product. It goes beyond the transaction itself. Thus, he highlighted and reinvented the concept of customer service, giving us the concept of after-sales service and warranty. He was also the one who coined the Ishikawa or fishbone diagram that highlights the cost and effect of the activities and processes while in constant search of quality in operation. And of course, we have here, last not uh, one, uh, Genichi Taguchi. He was an engineer and statistician. From the 1950s onwards, he developed a methodology for applying statistics to improve the quality of manufactured goods. The Gucci methods have been controversial among some conventional Western statisticians, but others have accepted many of the concepts introduced by him as valid extensions to the body of knowledge. And in services, marketing, and management, these are the following that have made significant contributions not worthy to be recognized. So we have here James H. Donnelly, in his works, he highlighted the differences between the marketing channels used for services and those used for physical goods and implications for marketing strategy. And we have here for uh, A. Parsu Parasuraman, Valerie A. Zitmal, and of course we have Leonard Elberry. They developed uh, their pioneering GAPS model of service quality, which highlighted the importance of efforts made to assess quality in services. And of course we have Number three, Mary Jo Bittner and Bernard H. Booms. They developed their expanded marketing mix for services, which took into account the distinctive characteristics of service identified in the crawling out stage intangibility, inseparability, heterogeneity, and perishability. They also added three more P's to the original marketing mix to make it more appropriate to services, people, processes, and physical evidence. And of course, we have Christopher Lovelock. He was best known as a pioneer in the field of service, services marketing, among their other titles, such as author, professor, and consultant. He was also known for his excellent case studies. And we have Theodore Levitt. He was one, he was an economist and professor at Harvard Business School. He was also an editor of the Harvard Business Review, who was officially or was especially noted for increasing the review circulation and for popularizing the term globalization. In 1983, he also proposed a definition for corporate purpose. Rather than merely making money, it is, so, it is to create and keep a customer. And of course, we have Walt Disney and the Disney Company. While crafting their concept form uh, theme parks, they also pioneered the thought of the service providers, not only as team players, but also as cast members, just like in a movie or theater. And of course, we have Bruce Laval, an industrial engineer of the Disney Company, conceptualized the terms gestology and the guest point of view, or GPOV, when viewing service quality in the tourism and hospitality industry. And of course, these are our questions for the discussions. Okay, so kindly um, just read the questions and just prepare for your answers. That's all for today. And thank you so much for listening.